week on Sailing Classy, we were a little slow because we took some time off to relax before rushing to finish our last few projects. However, we did receive a few gifts for our ditch bag from a few friends and family. Has Kitty's gift for Kitty's survival. And one has the uh, hand line, so that's cool. Thank you, we are very thankful. And received our absorbent glass mat batteries. If food is frying and people smiling like there is no other way to feel Alright so guys, as part of you as most of you know we've been working on our electrical system and trying to figure out how to get as much power out of our boat as we can so that we can make the trip that I'm gonna stop every day. And what we've come up with is using our alternator to generate power. It's the way most people do it, I guess without solar and so that's what we're doing uh, and what some of the biggest things that we needed to purchase were a battery monitor and an inverter uh, we needed an inverter so that we could run our AC not AC but our alternating current utilities like outlets and stuff like that after we received the inverter and battery monitor, we had to do a lot of research to determine how to wire our items into our system. We highly suggest reading the manual over and over so that you understand how the system is supposed to work with your existing setup. The next portion of this week's video is about how we had to wire our system, but if that doesn't interest you, I suggest you skip ahead to some of the more fun parts. So we finally got all of our pieces. Right here we have the Victron Multi Plus Compact, it's a 12 volt. 2000 watt 80 amp inverter slash charger. So this is what's going to charge our batteries as well as allow us to run our outlets, our alternating current, uh, when we're not plugged into the short power. Um, here we have the battery control uh, and this little device is going to read the temperature, the current going in and out, and also the state of charge of our batteries. And all of that information gets processed through this little control panel. So we can control the battery controller and the charge slash inverter through this interface. And so things that come with all of this, you know, there's more here than, than those three items, but the inverter, all it comes with is your temperature control or temperature sensor for your batteries. Battery control comes with this heap of wires. And in here, basically, you have another temperature sensor for your, the, the battery control. You have the connectors for the shunt, which actually measure the flow to the battery controller. And then you have the cables that go to the, your batteries that go to the battery controller. That way I can read the state of the charge. So you get all the wires with it. The hardest part for us was to find a place to put this because you want this really close to your batteries and the nearest spot for us was in the engine room. And so this piece here, this is the, just the cover, but we went to our local electronic shop, picked up a, basically a junction box that we can uh, set that inside, that way it stays clean and away from debris. This guy doesn't come with anything, basically it comes with just the plate and the mount for the wall. Right here we have the Blue C add a battery automatic charging relay and switch and this is going to allow us to combine our house batteries and our engine start batteries just in case our engine battery fails we can you know jump start our engine with the house batteries this is automatic charging switch so as soon as the this engine turns on and the starter battery is charged it automatically starts charging our house battery and right here this is just an uh our alternator stand-in. Uh, it's just a roll of tape. One of the things we did have to buy were the standard Ethernet cables. One for the inverter and one for the battery control. Basically this is the way they communicate with the controller. You know, it wasn't provided with either of them, but it's just a sta standard Ethernet RJ45. All the cables inside the cable are in the same order. Uh, that's what they call a straight through uh, Ethernet. We have everything on a piece of white paper right now so that we can show you guys what 
we're thinking the charge flow should be. Starting from our house batteries slash engine battery. And this is the way it should flow. And this is just positives. I'm not running the negative wires right now. So this little plate's gonna be our DC distribution panel for now. So now I have my cables drawn. When the engine is running, the alternator is going to be supplying power in this direction. It's going to hit the switch, which, if it needs to charge the engine battery, will charge the engine battery. So it will come this way. If it doesn't, once that fills up, it goes over here. to the relay which goes to the charger which then fills up the house batteries. So that's the flow when the engine's on. Now just think of it in reverse when you have the engine off and you're actually drawing energy from your house battery. So basically it just happens in the opposite direction. And so from the house batteries, we're gonna go up over to the switch. Instead of through the inverter, we're gonna go through the switch in this direction. And then up here, straight to the DC distribution panel. Okay. So that's basically the charge and discharge that'll be monitored through this <clears throat> controller. Things not drawn is shore power will go through the inverter down to the batteries when the engine is not running to charge the battery. So then it's just an, a, a, char a battery charger. And it'll also flow through there to the AC distribution panel to supply the power. And the nice thing about this is that it doesn't have to run the inverter when it has shore power. It only runs the inverter when it's not hooked up to shore power. So the shore power allows it to pass through straight to the, the AC distribution panel. We're not using the batteries to run the AC panel when we're hooked up to shore, it just passes through, uh, which is nice. After all of our research, we finally started on some of the installation, but we still have much, 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 much more to do this upcoming week. If you want to own a boat, marinas often sell very cheap or even give away abandoned boats. Otherwise, they have to demolish the boats like the three you see here. Our marina had 19 boats total to demolish that were still left over from Hurricane Sandy. It's always sad seeing boats getting demolished, but let's be honest, it's pretty awesome to watch as well. I'm just sad I couldn't get some video footage of the action. Meet our new kitten! Just kidding, we already have two and that's more than enough for us. This little cutie was found at the marina, so if you're interested in giving her a home, please let me know.